These days, spontaneous singing spills out from the church to the streets of Haiti. The recovery from the earthquake has been slow, um, but it has happened. Five years ago, Haiti was literally a disaster zone. Um, there was rubble in the streets, um, and uh, most of the economy, business, and government was shut down. Matthew Moore arrived here in 2010, soon after the massive earthquake hit. It killed more than 200,000 people in about 30 seconds. This mass grave with thousands of unidentified remains is possibly the most painful reminder of the quake's horrors. The statistics here in Haiti are a series of lows, lowest life expectancy, lowest income, and lowest literacy rates in all of the Western Hemisphere. Despite the stats, there are growing signs of recovery, like paved, clean streets. Haiti now is um, much better off than it was then. There are still many, many problems. Uh, I see progress, it depends on who you talk to, on whether that progress is good progress or bad progress. Progress includes new construction projects, homegrown businesses, and the daily sound of children playing without fear. Once we raise up a, a generation of godly men and women, that will bring change to Haiti. That will bring hope to Haiti. It's already begun. While many disaster relief agencies have long packed up and left Port-au-Prince, a commitment to Haiti's future has kept organizations like CBN's Operation Blessing in town to run an orphanage. Regent University teams train Haitian pastors to be counselors. And Compassion International helps send children like Pierre Elise to school. These people are particularly vulnerable. And so after the earthquake, uh, they're not going to be the first ones helped. They're probably going to be the last ones helped. Alléluia, moi je Jésus, que longtemps n'a moi cherché. It's taken years for Pierre to find his voice after the earthquake. I remember it happened around 4.40. School was over at 2.30. I met mom on the streets at 2.45. I never saw her again. Pierre's mother died in the disaster, leaving her three children behind. The next morning, we woke up and went looking for her. In that moment, we realized how big the impact of the earthquake was. We went out and saw people on the ground. It was weird seeing that many dead bodies. So I said to myself, oh God, maybe mom is dead too. A severe case of post-traumatic stress left the 17-year-old angry and bitter, but he refused to share his feelings with his father or anyone else. I didn't want to do anything except to wait for death to come and take me. So I became so scared, scared to go to school, scared to go to church, scared to go out. Pierre bottled his pain for more than two years until he attended a camp for young earthquake survivors and met with a child psychologist. I was facing the show under the shed of a coconut tree and she started talking to me. I started to weep and I wept for the rest of my time at the camp. I think that even when I was sleeping, I was weeping. Tears, prayer, and scripture ended his nightmare and taught him that there is... Nobody greater than Jesus. God is able. He now dreams of bringing that message to other suffering children in his country as an evangelist and an engineer. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Port-au-Prince, Haiti.